Welcome to a code report algorithm video. In this video, we're going to be covering two algorithms from the STL algorithm library, std count and std count if. And we'll also be covering an implementation of count using the std reduce function. Std count is an algorithm with linear time complexity, big O of n, that returns the number of elements in the range first to last that compare equal to val. And here in our declaration, you can see it's taking uh, two templates in it, which stands for input iterator. If you're not familiar with iterators, take a look at the C++ iterators video, which describes the differences between the different types of iterators and uh, the T, which is the type of our value. And the second line here just declares the uh, type of the output of our algorithm count. And you can see here, we take two iterators, first and last, which define the range which our algorithm is operating over and the value that we are searching for. Std count if is a very similar algorithm with linear time complexity big O of n as well that returns the number of elements in the range first to last for which pred is true. Uh, so the only difference here being that uh, we have an underscore if, and instead of a value, uh, this algorithm takes a unary predicate. So let's take a look at some very simple examples demonstrating how these functions work. So in our first example, we have a vector of integers with five values, one, two, three, one, and two. And you can see it's pretty simple. We just passed uh, two iterators that define our range and uh, we pass in a value. So when you pass in one, it returns two. And when you pass in three, it returns one, the cor corresponding number of times we see those values in our data structure. Count if is slightly more exciting. Uh, we have the same vector of integers, but instead of passing in a value, we can pass in uh, a lambda expression. Uh, so here we have a simple lambda is odd that returns true if uh, when you take the modulus of uh, your element uh, by two, it returns a remainder of one. And so uh, if we do this on our vector of integers, we will get uh, three because we have one, three, and one, which are three numbers that are odd. So you might be wondering, uh, you know, these are pretty simple. Why do we need these functions? And in this trivial example, you know, it's not really necessary to have a lambda that's named um, in order to pass this in. You could do this inline, but when you have a more complicated uh, lambda or just piece of logic that you're using to count a uh, number of elements uh, in a data structure, it might become less clear that what you're actually doing with a raw for loop is counting uh, the number of elements in that data structure that meet some sort of uh, predicate. And when you name that uh, via a lambda and then pass that in using uh, the count if function, it's extremely clear still that you're just counting something. Um, so as Sean Parent always says, know your algorithms. And even if it's a simple one like count if, it can make your code a lot more readable in terms of when uh, logic is getting a little bit more complicated. You'll still always be able to identify that you're counting the number of elements in a data structure. So to make this video a little bit more exciting because I know these two algorithms are not as interesting as uh, some others that we've covered in the past, uh, I decided that I would try implementing a count algorithm using uh, another algorithm in our STL, uh, uh, STL library uh, called Reduce. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I was listening to a podcast by CPPCast, which is an awesome podcast. Uh, if you're not aware of it already, uh, I would go check them out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And in the beginning of the video or in the podcast, uh, they mentioned uh, that someone had commented via Twitter that they had started listening to another podcast called LambdaCast, which focuses on FP or functional programming, which is a different programming paradigm uh, than typically you see uh, C++ coded in. And uh, they were commenting on how there's you know three major functions in all FP languages, uh, map, filter, and reduce. Sometimes the reduce uh, function is called fold, um, but that using these three functions, you can compose them together to create uh, a, a, an insane number of other algorithms uh, just using these three. And um, they went through a number of them, and a lot of them are in the STL algorithm library, one of them being count. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to implement that using uh, the reduce function that we actually got. So we've actually always had a version of reduce, but it went by a different name, and that stood accumulate. Typically, we use accumulate just to uh, sum the values in a uh, data structure. But 
you can use this with Lambda expressions to do a number of other things. Um, and we got a slightly different version of this in C++17 called std reduce. So essentially these are the same except that std reduce has a number of overloaded versions that can take uh, different uh, ways of processing them. Uh, you know, you can vectorize and you can run them in parallel, which you don't have those options with accumulate. But when you just look at their basic, you know, default behavior, they're basically the same. Um, and so now with std reduce, we can write more sort of functional code. So taking a look at what this might look like, um, I have a namespace here just to uh, disambiguate this from the uh, std count. And it looks very similar, but instead of um, uh, in here actually, you know, checking our value. We're just calling std reduce uh, with the same uh, two iterators, initializing the number uh, that we want to return at zero, and then just having this uh, simple generic lambda that basically adds one whenever our element is equal to our value. So I'm implementing count, not count if, but it, count if would look very similar. And uh, this is basically it. So we can uh, run the same code that we had in our first example, uh, except just calling a different version of count, the one in the my namespace, and it's going to return the exact same answers that we saw the first time we saw this code. So um, I think this is interesting to think about. Uh, you know, for anyone that's an FP enthusiast or an FP hobbyist, you know, this is going to be nothing new and extremely straightforward to you. Uh, but for a lot of C++ programmers, especially those beginning, they're not really aware of uh, the FP paradigm and these map, filter, and reduce functions. And a lot of the STL algorithms uh, can be very simply implemented using uh, this reduce function. So whenever I cover an algorithm in the future uh, that can be implemented using a reduce function, I will probably add that at the end. So I hope you found this interesting. Uh, make sure to check out CppCast and LambdaCast if you aren't already listening to those because they are awesome resources. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.